componentize your depreciation. That means that a roof can be written off over 15 years. Carpet can be written off over five years. Plumbing, heating and air conditioning, electrical, cabinets, countertops, sinks, faucets, refrigerators, stoves, all those things can be written off at a much more rapid pace. The reason hotels replace their carpet every five years is because it's a complete write-off. They get to take 20% of the price of the carpet every year. Boom, boom, boom. And then they buy another one. Because they got it all back. Oh, and if they have to write it off... Uh, if they have to take up the carpet and throw it away before the five years, that's called salvage. They get to take the rest of it they haven't taken already now and put in new carpet start the five-year depreciation. So with each one of your rental properties, you have the opportunity to componentize that sale and thereby increase your deductions. In, in fact, you could double your deduction. Now, have you heard of a thing called recapture? You know about recapture? When you go to sell a property, the government <coughs> giveth and the government taketh away. So the depreciation they gave you when you go to sell the property, they take it back, Indian givers. How fair is that? It's not fair at all, right? But when you have written it off as a component, it's not recapturable. And your CPA doesn't know that. I ally yellow nose, right? And he comes to my trainings. And he teaches. So that's how you found me, right? Was through Al, right? So Al is a master CPA. And he has a system around this. And the opportunity is that we componentize the depreciation to increase the deductions. Are taxes a profit center or a cost center? It's a cost center, right? It's a cost center. How would you like to convert it to a profit center, right? When you save money, it's making money, right? So we can save money in taxes. I've given you one example, but it gets better. Has anybody ever heard of... of um, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> it's, you know where you have all these losses, but then you have too much income, and the government takes your too much income, and they take your losses away? It's called alternative minimum tax. Alternative minimum tax. That means you made too much, and we're going to tax you anyway. And we don't care how many write-offs you've got. We're going to tax you anyway. So because you made too much money, we're going to take it away, and there's a sliding scale all the way up to zero. So the more money you make, the less you can take in losses. Isn't that rotten? Yeah. What if we had a way around that? Would that be a good thing? Yeah. Legally? And this is the reason that Al Aiello recommends my system to all of his clients. What I'm about to share with you is a game changer of an incredible magnitude. This thing called a personal property trust allows you to collect the rents as the manager of the property. Not as the owner, as the manager. The IRS says that when you own property and it's passive assets that you actively manage, meaning you actively manage, then you have the opportunity for unlimited losses to offset your ordinary income. Un 
limited losses to offset your ordinary income. The advice that many people get from their CPA or their attorney is that they need to set up an LLC as a management entity. Wrong! Paradigm what? Shift. They thought that was a good idea for liability protection. They didn't think and even know about what they had done to their client from a tax standpoint. When you, when you, meaning you, not like an LLC you, but you, 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 you manage the property, then you get the unlimited loss. But when an entity manages the property, it doesn't get it. And neither do you. So, this is called a management trust. The management trust creates the opportunity for unlimited losses. And this is, Al has even written a special report about it. He's just head over heels in love with this concept. And in fact, that's what happened to you, right? Yeah, he told, you. you emailed me, yeah, right? Because we wanted to know what's the best way to connect brands. And he said, hold on, hold on. We wanted to know what's the safest and best way to connect brands. And he says, email Lou Brown, and then you said, use a management trust. That's how they found out about me. Isn't that a good thing? Oh, oh did you actually sent me an email and I actually responded? Yes. What? You didn't Say, even that. Know. Say that again. You actually responded, but you didn't even know. Us. <laughs> what about that? I served a client I didn't even have. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and they're here. And they're here. You see how that works? You give and you get. You give and you get. And the universe will support you in everything that you do. When you operate with integrity, when you build your business, when you serve your clients, you will be blessed in ways you cannot fathom. And it will happen ongoingly. The synchronicity in your life will shift and change and you will be served ongoing, ongoing. See, I was supposed to stay up in Stevenson Ranch. I stayed there one night. My student said, hey, I don't want to have to drive up there, drive back, drive up there, drive back. He said, would you just come stay at my house tonight? I said, okay. So I checked out of the hotel, stayed at his house. He says, hey, why, why would you go back? Just don't go back. Just stay with me. And I did. You see? And then he had a party for me last night. And we had a great party and a lot of, a lot of wonderful people came. You, you can't, where can you write that down? I mean, like, that's what I want to have happen. No, it just happens. You just served ongoing. So you create that as your expectation that that's what's going to happen. Because you do good business. You do good business, you get good support. That's the law. The law of the universe. Never mind the law of the land. It's the law of the universe. And you are a sovereign. You are above the law. Oh, I'm getting out there, aren't I? <laughs> you actually are. You're, you actually are a different human than you've been told you are. But anyway, that's another story. Oh, quick question. Please. If you have management trust, does that work even if you use a management, a property management company that you pay to manage your nope, property? Nope, it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, a property management company is a separate entity. That's an expense. Now, you can claim that you are the one overseeing the management company. So not an entity is overseeing them, but you are overseeing them, and therefore, in their duties, you are reviewing statements monthly, you're making telephone calls, you're verifying information, so you are actively managing your property. That argument can be made. Okay? So, so you, you in other words, you can use you a ten percent deduction and then still do and still actively manage your assets. That's an argument you can make. And you might win. <laughs> 
That's, that's what happens. Now, our game is to not get audited. And the reason you don't get audited is because of the way that you design your tax return. And the way you design your tax return is to have attachments to it recognizing and referencing the code sections that are relative to what you just did. So whatever it is that you took or, you know, that, that you legitimately took because it was in the tax code, you don't let them figure it out. You figure it out for them. Because before there is a audit, human eyeballs have to look at it. And if they look at it and they see references throughout the document that reference the actual tax code that's actually attached to the tax return, no audit. Is that a beautiful thing? Yeah. Oh, yes. So that's our plan. This is your rental portfolio. And your rental portfolio qualifies for depreciation and, in fact, componentized depreciation. Then we're going to have another portfolio. And this is our owner financing. This means we sold the house and then we carried back owner financing. The code, the IRS code, allows you to sell property and carry back financing on something called an installment sale. Now, an installment sale rules are that, let's say that you bought the house for $200,000, you sold it for $300,000, you made $100,000 in gain, that gain is not payable until you actually receive it. So when you sell a house on an installment sale, you spread it out. You spread out the receiving of the gain. When you receive the gain over time, you can use that spread out gain to offset with your depreciation. Now you see what we're doing here. So your depreciation offsets your income here. So you're wiping out capital gain. Now, we sell our properties at 10.99% for 480 months. How long is 480 months? 40 years. That's 40 year financing that we provide to our buyers. And you might think that sounds high. But what the truth is, is it gets, when you finally do all the gyrations on the money, you're going to get down to about what rent would have been. So they're going to pay a payment similar to what rent would be. Is that a good thing? Yeah. So you're attracting clients now that love your program. They're actually buying the house, not renting it. How many of you believe buyers take better care of property than renters do? Yeah. Oh, boy. So now we've just accomplished what we want. We want somebody that's going to take care of the property and send us a check. Because we don't care about the real estate. We care about the money. Right. So we get our money from rent, from rent to own, and from owner financing. Plus, we get more money when they move in and 10% down, that's a nice day, or more, by the way, or more. And I teach you how to go after these guys big time because there's many owners, many business owners that cannot qualify for a loan. Is that true? And they've got down payments. One of my clients, it's in the book, he, uh, he did exactly what I said. I said, buy the house this way with the seller financing, borrow the repair money from a private money lender, someone who has an IRA or 401k. He did exactly that. Then I said, OK, 
Okay, turn your house monster on. That's what we call that marketing system that brings in the buyers. It said, turn your house monster on and let's see who shows up. All of a sudden, a couple that own a Chinese restaurant showed up. And they had $100,000 to put down. Is that a good day? I don't care who you are, that's a good day. And this property is in Boston, Massachusetts. Sold it for $328,000, got $100,000 down, financed $228,000, exactly as I'm telling you. So he became the bank. He became the bank for his buyers that couldn't qualify for a loan, but they had the ability to pay. Recently, I sold a house for $425,000. I got exactly the 10% I was asking, $42,500 down, financed it exactly this way, and they paid me a monthly payment of $3,759. Is that a good thing? Oh, yeah. That's a good thing. He owns a nail salon. Ladies, can we talk? <laughs> there is money in these nails. There is serious money in these nails. So that guy makes about twelve grand a month painting nails.